Welcome everybody back to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. We're here at Singularity University's Exponential Medicine. Everyone, my name is Kate Warnock and I am delighted to have with us probably our most esteemed guest, Mr. Peter Diamandis. Peter, how are you? Hi, Kate. Doing great. I should say Dr. Peter Diamandis. I apologize. No, it's fine. So as everybody I'm sure knows, Dr. Diamandis is the CEO of XPRIZE as well as the co-founder of Singularity University. So Peter, you're a pioneer in bringing people together to really solve the world's biggest challenges. Can you take our pulse and how are we doing as far as collaborating to address the healthcare challenges? So what gives me great hope and makes me excited about things right now is that the, the forces in play to reinvent healthcare are massive and completely new. So I'm not, I have very little dependence or expectation that the government's gonna do anything or that the existing healthcare institutions are gonna do anything. But what gets me excited is the fact that we now have Apple and Google and Facebook and Samsung uh, and a ton of venture capital coming in, and then this massive startup community who are coming into play to reinvent healthcare. Uh, and so that's, I mean, healthcare for me is this massively broken system uh, that is inefficient, um, is, uh, is dangerous in some cases, uh, and ultimately uh, has the potential to be completely reorganized. And I think it's gonna be done uh, where the patient is the CEO of their own health. And all of this technology, all of these companies around them are helping give them the information and also the intellectual support through artificial intelligence so on and so forth to help uh, make the right choices. So I'm excited about, about reinventing healthcare more than ever before. Well, so Peter, I think that, that your response really leads in beautifully to our next question. I think that you would agree. Are we in the midst of a healthcare renaissance? Yeah, we're in the midst of a healthcare disruption where the systems that are in place today are going to fall by the wayside as much better systems come into place. The analogy I would use is, um, you know, when Google came into existence, um, the need for building elaborate libraries or getting research companies or organizations going started to decrease because Google was a hundred times better and free. And so I think we're going to bring healthcare systems into play that are effectively far more efficient, far uh, and, and far better, and far less costly. Um, so I, I think we're going to head towards what I call a demonetization and a democratization of healthcare, where uh, healthcare for the son of a billionaire or the son of the poorest child on the planet effectively is going to be enabled by AI and robotics and be the best healthcare possible at a cost which is de minimis compared to what we have today. Absolutely. You know, you touch on so many of the things that I know that our speakers have been talking about as far as the democratization of healthcare, as well as keeping the humanity in technology. Do you have a favorite moment or a favorite example perhaps that really does demonstrate keeping the human side of medicine at the front and center? Well, I have a, a, a personal example that is, shows how we don't do it today. Uh, my father, who's 88, who's got advanced Alzheimer's, broke his pelvis and is admitted to the hospital. And while he's there for a week, uh, he is there being seen by a neurologist worried about his Alzheimer's, an orthopedist worried about his pelvis, a cardiologist worried about his heart. There's nobody looking at him as the whole patient. Right. Everybody's looking at the charts and the data and the subsystems. But no one is there to look at him as a human or talk to his family. And it's like, just, it angers me. Right. And so my point is, listen, let's have technology do what it does best. And let's allow the physician and the healthcare workers, the nurses and physicians to actually care about the person. Free them up to care about the person and look at the person as a whole versus as data points. You know, uh, speaking as far as technology and, and humanity and the example that you just gave, it makes me wonder, you know, do you see that team-based care might be a disruptor uh, that, that should be adopted more widely throughout the healthcare industry? You said team-based care? Team-based care, right. So, yes, I mean, and there are, I mean, the, the challenge is that the healthcare system is so burdened by bureaucracy and legal and insurance that it's, you know, the doctors are spending more time filling out paperwork than they are spending time with the patients. Uh, and I just think that 
should change and needs to change. Um, and I, I think I think that we live in a world of a sick care system, not a health care system. And we are, uh, we're only dealing with, um, with a person at the after things have gone wrong. Right. And I think uh, we need to shift it to the point where we're helping people, helping keep people out of the hospital. And this is what I get excited about. Well, so we had Pripal Tambor uh, on earlier, and Pripal is going to be talking tomorrow. And really, it was really totally addressing what you just said, that this is, he said, I'm kind of sick with the healthcare industry uh, because we've been focused on the wrong thing, and that is illness. And he said, I don't even think that it's about wellness. It's really about what is it that people want out of life? So I think that one of the things that you've done so well is that you convene these thinkers who just think in, in a, not just in a different way, but in a way that is trying to pull from people what is it that's truly going to improve their lives. So thank you for, for doing that. Yeah. One more question for you. What needs to be disrupted next? After healthcare? Sure. Well, I think what's going on this decade is there are two big disruptions, it's healthcare and education. I think education at the same time, we're going from what has been the, the state, the, sort, the, the country, the nation, the government providing healthcare and education, and it's just inefficiently done. Uh, and I think that we're going to change the way we educate our children. And it's going to be uh, in a fashion that is not one-to-many, it's one-to-one, -one, and it's, it's a personalization. Again, it's the ability for technology to help us personalize the experience and to democratize the experience. Uh, and so those are the two areas that I'm focused on right now, is, is disrupting healthcare and education. You know, I have to let you know that one of our speakers was on earlier and he suggested that there needs to be an exponential kid <laughs> because he believes that it's time for us to expose children to opportunities far earlier in life. So I think that, that you're tracked right into that. So Peter Diamandis, it has been an honor having you Thank here you, at the Guyville Insights Lounge. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Kate Warnock. Please join us again later. We'll see you soon.